Well, amen. God bless you. Welcome to Mount Zion on a Sunday morning. How about you get on your feet and give God praise if you're happy to be in the house of God? Well, amen. God's been good to us. We have a reason to praise God today. Well, amen. Well, welcome everyone that's in here. Welcome everyone viewing online and all my parking lot praisers that are outside braving that cold out there. But I know you got nice heaters in your car, so you're good too. Well, amen. Give God praise for this beautiful day that he has blessed us with. You know, it's some snow on the ground, but the, the sun is shining. Well, welcome to Mount Zion. This is a special Sunday. Well, I say every Sunday is a special day because it's the Lord's Day, amen? But we come here today. It is Super Bowl Sunday. One thing that I said at the early service was that you and Patrick Mahomes have something in common today. You want to know what that is? You and Patrick Mahomes are both preparing for victory this morning. Amen. Anybody preparing for victory this morning? Well, amen. There's a scripture I want to open us up with, and then I'm going to pray. And it says this in Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. The scripture right here declares the end from the beginning. That's what God declares over your life, the end from the beginning. That means when God made the plans for you, for your life, he started at the end, then he worked backwards. If you think about it this way, if you were to write a movie and you were writing a movie script and you said, I'm going to start at the end on how this thing is going to end, you'll probably say, I'm going to end this movie with a bang, with a victory. The good thing about your life, the blessing about your life today is that God has victory in store for you for the future. Not defeat, not failure, not heartache, but God has victory in store for you. And we have a message for you today, and, and uh, Pastor Larry preached about it this morning, that all things work together to your advantage. How many of you believe that today? So today we're going to magnify God. We're going to lift up the name of God, magnify him, not our problems, knowing that we serve a great God, a God that is in control, and a God that is leading you today to victory in your life. How about you lift up your hands to the heavenlies and let's just go to God in prayer this morning. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for the faithful people of God that are here today, faithful people of God in the parking lot, faithful people of God that are viewing online. We know that you honor those who honor you, Father, Lord. So today we have come to lift up your name and honor you, Lord, because you are worthy of all the praise, Lord, all the glory, Lord. It all belongs to you, Father. We ask you, Father, on this day, Lord, to come into this place, Lord, in your mighty way. We want to hear a life-changing word from you, Lord. I would pray a special blessing upon the faithful people of God that are here today, Lord. And right now, we are getting ready to lift up your name and praise you like never before, Lord. We pray all these things in your precious name. Let all the faithful people of God shout amen all around the sanctuary. Come on, praise team.
And why don't you just stand on your feet for a moment and just thank Jesus today. This is a time to thank God that you're living today. We need to thank God for waking us up this morning. Thank God for starting us on our way. That's the reason we've got a praise here today. Anybody got a reason to praise God today? Come on, give him a hand clap. Listen, I want you to bow your heads. Let's just meditate and talk to God, thanking God for life today. We're celebrating Black History Month. Black History Month. I want to tell you, you are important. Why don't we give some black people a great big hand clap today? It's nothing wrong with celebrating black history. I want to tell you, God loves you. You're an important part of the makeup of our country. We are an important part of what God is doing in our world today. You know, I want to tell you about some things that I want you to pray for right now. We need to pray for our future. We need to pray for our young people, pray for our kids. I work with many schools and with colleges, and I'm seeing today that the children really are our future, that the young people are our future today. I want you to talk to God about our young black boys and young black girls. We want to pray for them even on today. And also just thank God again that you're alive today. Thank God for your health today. How many just thankful to God that God is just keeping you healthy right now? So there's so many reasons to praise and to thank God even on today. Ask God to continue to move in your home and on your job, in your situation, all that you got going on in life. Ask God to continue to move. We're praying for God to even help our community when it comes to the vaccine. Or even on this week, Pastor and many of the pastors around the country and even myself were advocating for vaccines to be distributed through churches so that people can stay safe if they want to during this pandemic. So we're believing right now that our communities will open up to people being able to receive vaccines through their church. I want you to pray for that movement right now. There's some people that don't have access that should have access if they want it. Heavenly Father, we just thank you right now for all that you're doing. We thank you for moving. We thank you, God, that we're alive today. We thank you for all of those in the lot that are listening, all of those that are online. Continue to bless them right now. We believe that God is in this place. We believe that God is in all that we're doing today. And we ask that you would just continue to bless your people today. We love you. We thank you, God, that we were able to praise and worship your name today. Thank you, God for yet another day in the land of the living. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, amen and amen. Come on, can you give God a hand clap of praise? Amen. You may be seated here in God's house. Good morning, Mount Zion. If you're happy to be alive, I want you to wave your hand or honk your horn today. And we are so thankful that you're here with us today. Listen, we're going to go into our giving time, our time to bless God. We're so thankful to all of you who give a tithe and an offering, all of those who trust God. I believe that your future is always better when you put God first. That's one thing I teach my children and my family, to put God first. And we believe that when you put God first, he opens up some things that will help you out. So I pray again that you prepare for offering. But for, in a moment right now, we're going to watch and see what God is doing through the church here. And so we're going to watch our ministry announcements. And I want to ask that you would pray for all the ministries that you see us doing because it comes through prayer that we're able to do all that we're able to do, even in a time like this. So let's watch our ministry announcements. We are staying on the move for Christ with a strong vision for the future. With the current shift in our world, it is essential that we reach the world for Jesus. Pray for the vision that God has delivered to us. We are continuing to reach the community through evangelism, feeding the hungry, clothing families, encouraging everyday champions on NBC, fighting for social justice, supporting the faith community through United Pastors, and much more. Now is the time to continue to grow our mission to meet today's needs. Our Dream Center for the time being will be transformed into the Restoration Center designed to serve people during the pandemic. Demand for our family support programs have increased and we need to be prepared to serve. We will also create a business center to help entrepreneurs, a place for employment help, mental health assistance, and much more. 
As a part of this vision, we will create a prayer room in the educational wing. In partnership with TCT, we are also launching Grace TV, our personal online network with news, special programming, and teachings all centered around family life. Lastly, we are enhancing our online experience. We are reaching thousands from all around the country with our online services on social media. To better engage viewers, we will be creating an online church stage and set to expand our reach. In the coming two years, we will need additional media workers, volunteers for prayer coordinators, kids program directors, and more. If you would like to join any of these ministries, contact the church. And a special thank you to all those who are faithful givers and supporters of the Mount Zion Church. Thank you for 2020. You make the difference. Let's continue to share the gospel of Jesus Christ in 2021. Mount Zion, on the move for Christ. Amen. Let's give God some praise for all that he's doing here at Mount Zion. Listen, I'm going to ask if you would stand on your feet and turn your Bibles to the book of Malachi 3, 6 through 12 as we prepare ourselves for the giving time. And even also, if you, as you're in the lot, as you hear my voice, you can also turn to your smartphones or if you have your Bible with you and our ushers will be out there momentarily for the tithe and the offering. We're so thankful to all of you who, again, remain faithful to give in so many different ways. Uh, we know who you are and what you're doing, and we're thankful for all of those that give through Givelify, through our Text to Give Avenue, through mzov.org, or also those that even take the care to drop their tithe and offering in the mail. And for those that come to church and bring their tithe and offering, we're thankful to all of those who trust God with their finances. Let us read today in Malachi 3, 6 through 12, and let's read it responsibly. The Bible says this. It says, For I am the Lord. I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. And you say? Even from the days of your fathers, ye have gone away from my name, and have not kept them. Return unto me, and I will return unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. Where is your name? Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye said, Wherein have we robbed thee in tithes and offerings? Ye are cursed with the curse. Ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I would not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sake, that he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall he. Let's read 12 together. And all nations, nations shall, shall call, call you blessed, blessed, for ye shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. Let us bow our heads in a moment of thanks, in a moment of gratitude, thanking God for all that he's done for us. You know, the Bible says that we can't serve two masters. We can't serve God and money at the same time. So today I ask that you would choose God. And by choosing God as we give, we're telling him that all we have and all will be is because of what God has done for us today. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We lift you up. We magnify your name. And we bless your name for all the marvelous things that you've done for us, God. Bless the giver in a mighty and powerful way. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, amen. And amen. I'm going to ask if you have your tithe and offering, you can come now to the tithe and baskets. And we have our media team is going to play a video, I believe. Or we, the media team is going to play a video.
us all stand. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. say amen as you remain standing for just a moment still and bow your heads to thank God even now for the mar marvelous miraculous miracles that he had grants you even last week those in the car we're so glad to see you out there and we're praising God for the many miracles that God has granted you and I all week long God has been better to us than we've even been to our own selves and for this we have to give God praise Give him the glory. Thank him, yes. And then we need to thank him for our families and our friends, even now. God is able to do abundantly above all that we ask or think. He's been good to us. We need to show him and let him know how grateful we are for how he has been good to us and with us and been with us and even now if you'll pray to God and ask God to get all into my mind my body my spirit my strength and my heart we will hear from heaven you want to hear is there any word from the Lord you have to ask him for it and it does not come merely because a pastor calls himself or herself prepared but rather it comes because the Holy Spirit engulfs the spirit of the man or woman of God and the people of God and there is a dynamic that goes on. What is it that you need to hear from God this week? What is, it, what is it that you want to know from God? God says he's ready to hear and answer your prayers, but you have to ask. Somebody's not praying, someone's looking around, someone's spectating. There's a young person who's not talking to God. You would talk to God. When you go through your trials and tribulations, don't wait until that occurs, but rather you can do it right now. Those in the car, even though you're in the car, God's ready to speak to you, but you must ask. He said, ask, and ye shall receive, seek, and ye shall find, knock, and the door will be open unto you. And I want you to pray this morning for those who are not receiving the vaccine. Some are not receiving them because they are afraid, because they have misinformation about it. Others are just not receiving because there are no access. And last week, we gathered here in the church and 40, 50 pastors on Zoom was looking on, cheering us on, saying we need to encourage our people to be vaccine, vaccinated. And that there are certain areas, certain zip codes that if you live in, certain economic arenas that you are about, you are prop, part of, you will discover you're not getting the vaccination. And so we pray to God, even now, that God would make the vaccination available to everybody who wants to receive it. If you don't want to receive it, we pray that God would give you wisdom. Last, uh, several weeks ago, Sister Megan and I received the vaccine and we got our second vaccine on last Wednesday and we did not have any kind of repercussion and everything went well and we feel comfortable even now and we want others to feel the same way eternal God our father we come in the name of Jesus we pray that you will speak to us and through us we pray that your power will come down in this place and for those who are inside God we pray that next week will be even a better week than the week that they had on this past week and for those in the car God we thank you for they're worshiping you inside of their car. God, we know that they're warm, but we pray that you will warm them up with the Holy Spirit, God. And whatever they stand in the need of, in the name of Jesus, we pray that you will grant it to them right now, God. Give them strength, God. Give them health, God. Give them wisdom, God. Wrap your arms protection around them, not only uh, them, but also their family that is assembled there. Let them know that it's not about whether or not they're inside, or outside of the church, but rather it's about worshiping you in spirit and in truth. 
And even in their cars, your Holy Spirit can pervade their cars so that they can hug their hearts and say hallelujah and thank Jesus even in the midst of their car. Right now, those who are looking at us online, God, we pray that you remind them that even in their home, you've given them a home to comfort in and to worship in even now, wherever they are. We pray in the name of Jesus that your presence will make himself, yourself, known to them right now. And if there's anybody who do not know you in the free pardon of their sin, let them know this is not the time to wait. This is not the time to falter and falter. But you said to us that the day that they hear your voice, harden not their heart. Receive you inside of their spirit now. In Jesus' name. We pray and all the people of God said amen. Give God a great big hand praise as you go to your seat. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Amen. How many of you prayed for me today? How many of you didn't pray for me this morning? Well, you have to stand in the corner on one foot for the next 20, 25 minutes with your face towards the wall like they used to do in school. Amen. I know somebody didn't pray for me this morning. I can feel it. So I need y'all to pray one more time. And in the cards, I feel that there were some people in the cards that did not pray for me this morning. And I need you to pray right now. There's no word in the pulpit if there's no word from the people. There is no prayer from the people. There is no word in the pulpit. Amen. Amen. I feel it now. Yes. I feel it, 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 okay. I think we're okay. Give God another great big hand praise. This morning I want you to do something that I think you should have done probably a year ago. We've been in this pandemic almost a year. I remember it so well because I gathered with a hundred pastors in the Fine Arts Center right next door and it was the next day that they had said, we have a virus. And so I remember it so very well, but I also remember what the Lord had said to me. He said, or revealed to me, that he was going to take care of his people. And I don't know about you, but there's, a t there's some times I, I need God to just take care of me. But there's other times that I need God to really take care of me. And so today I want you to do something. I want you to ask God to take care of you. But in order for God to take care of you, you've got to take a load off. Take a load off. That's, that's what I was always told some years ago by my, my daddy. It's a colloquial, colloquialism. It, it, it's a tricky statement. It, 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 it means more than you think. It really means. And so often we use colloquialism a lot. Those of you who stood awake in your English class, you remember that word colloquialism. Tricky statements, tricky words that mean other than what you think it means. For example, in my days we used to say, I'm cool and I'm really cool, even though I wasn't really cool. It, it just means that I was cool, calm, and collective. Larry, when he was a kid, I never shall forget, we were starting to stand in the front of the church and welcome the people at the end of service and shake their hand. There was this one cool dude came up. He was cool inside of the church. You know, I, I have to admit that sometimes I need some cool people in the church. You know, I don't always need quiet people. I, I sometimes need cool people who, you know, cause attention upon themselves because of their appreciation for their own identity and their own specific and sometimes strange personalities. I mean, I have to admit, this dude was not only cool, but he was actually crazy. And, and, and he came up to us at the end of service and he looked at little Larry and said to little Larry when he was about four or five years old in the small church, he said, hey, dude, little dude, 
let me put a bug in your ear. Well, you should have saw the expression of little Larry when that man said that to little Larry. He looked at it as if to say, ooh, and, and, and started to crying because he actually thought that the man was going to put a bug in his ear. And so that's colloquialism. It, it says one thing, but it really means another. My daddy uh, used to use colloquialism all the time, you know. Uh, when someone would knock at the door, the first thing he would yell uh, at the door, whoever was on the other side was, who is it? And then he would discover who it is. Hey, this is Joe, uh, let me in. He said, come on in and take a load off. Now, now he did not mean go over there and find uh, a kind of heavy load lifter and pick up some heavy pallet or something. What he was saying to him, them was, come in and have a seat and transfer your body weight to the seat of the chair. Transfer your weight into the chair and let the chair handle your weight. It's about transference and we ought to remember that particular word because my text is going to come from 1 Peter 5 and 7. As you turn your Bibles to it, 1 Peter 5 and 7 because what Peter is going to say that there are times in our lives that we need to take the load off. There are some times in our life we need to transfer the load or the heavy burden or the anxieties and worries that we're carrying. And so what Peter is going to say to the Christian church that I know you're going up under something. You're now up under the Roman government and the Roman government is trying to get rid of Christianity altogether. Uh, the Roman government does not want Christianity because they understand that they can brainwash you a little quicker as long as you do not have the Jesus inside of your mind, your heart, and your spirit. That you do not do what Paul said, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus that counteracts the problems that you are up under on a day-to-day -day basis. And so Rome, or the Roman government, was persecuting the Christian church. They were putting them up under all kinds of pressure. And the pressure was not just a kind of eventful pressure, but rather it was a day-to-day -day pressure. Is there anybody in the house that will admit that your pressures is not just an event or on a weekend kind of a, a, a schedule, but rather it's on a day-to-day -day basis. I'll wake you up in just a moment. They were going up under something. They were carrying a heavy burden. They were carrying heavy loaded. They were extremely being persecuted. And, and so Peter comes along and says, I know how to, how to deal with your issue. You've got to learn how to transfer your weight to somebody else to handle your weight and your problem. And I need to tell you already, you cannot turn sometime to family. You cannot turn to government sometime. You cannot turn to your own thinking sometime. You cannot turn to a friend sometime. You cannot turn to brother boy sometime. You cannot turn to sister girl sometime. You've got to go to the Lord and have him answer and, have, and handle your burdens. I wish I could preach this thing. You've got to transfer it to Jesus. And so what, what Peter says to the Christian church is, bring your burdens to the Lord and leave them there. Take a load off. Can you say, take a load off? Can you look to the person next to you and just say, take a load, take a load off? off. Now, now here's what he says in verse 6, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6, he says, before you can take a load off, you have to humble yourself. You see, you cannot exalt yourself because when you exalt yourself, then the Bible said the Lord is going to have to bring you low. Now, if you think you can handle all of your problems, then, then what God says is that you go ahead and I'll take my hands off you and the solution and the situation. And so he says, if you're going to exalt yourself, 
He says, those that exalt themselves shall be brought low. But those that humble themselves shall be exalted. Here he says, therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. Now, now you need to underscore the hand of God because the hand of God does a whole lot of heavy lifting. In, in fact, he doesn't only handle your burdens, but he handles you who is up under the burden as well. There are times that he not only lifts your burdens, oh, I wish I had a shout in church today, but sometimes he also handles the burden bearer. King Jesus, the songwriter says, rolls all burdens away. Not only does he roll all burdens away, but he also lifts me. When nothing else could help, he lifts me. His hand, and he doesn't just have, I wish I could preach it, just any kind of a hand, but he has a mighty hand. He has a strong hand hand and in the Old Testament he says he has a right hand and his right hand is strong as his left hand generally one of your hand is stronger than the other hand but in the case of Jesus both hands are equally as strong he has a mighty hand I, I, I'm going to press that because he's going to turn around and say cast all your cares before him because he cares for you but he's going to qualify before you cast your cares before him don't forget he's got mighty hands i wish i had a, a shouter in the house this morning his mighty hand woke you up this morning have i got a witness in the house the alarm clock didn't uh, wake you up alexis didn't you wake didn't wake you up because if Alexis could have woken you up then take Alexis out there and say Alexis pull these people out of the cemetery and I guarantee nobody wakes up but if the Lord hadn't stretched forth his hands this morning you wouldn't be here this morning and that's shout that's what you need to that's enough to shout about I wish I could just take my that's enough to shout about if you're sitting here take your hand and put it in front of your mouth and just blow in it and I need to tell you it's in him you live move and have your being if it had not been for the Lord on our side you wouldn't even woke up this morning you wouldn't even have eyes to see you couldn't hear this morning you couldn't walk this morning you could couldn't talk this morning you couldn't have ate your breakfast this morning have I got a witness in the house you couldn't even remember how to start your car up if it had not been for the Lord on your side because of his mighty hand he lifted when nothing else could help it was his love that lifted me but with his love was the hand of God have I got a witness in the house ain't God been good to you hasn't God been better to you than you've been to your own self hey woke me up this morning help me in my right man with his hands of protection he kept all hurt harm and danger around me it wasn't my alarm clock that kept the thief away from my home no it was the hand of God who put his angels around my house to protect me hand is a strong and mighty hand. Y'all get that? He says that he may exalt you in due time. Now here is the text. But before I give you the text, and I'm going to give you the reasons why you need to do what verse 7 says. You can't do what verse 7 says unless you understand what verse 6 says. Humble and mighty hand. Then he says in verse 8, he says, these two passages surround what I need you to do. Take a load off. He says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, your enemy, the person who is against you, one who has aggravated you. Paul said it this way, that every day I wake up in the morning, there's somebody who is always challenging me 
and trying to get me to think the wrong kind of way. He said, every time I would do good, every day I wake up, every day I walk around, every moment of my life, every time I would do good, evil is always present and there's somebody who is behind the evil and Peter tells us who is behind the evil. He says, your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion and he's always roaring in your ear. When you wake up in the morning, he said, be fearful because you don't know if you're going to catch the disease or not. But while he's roaring in your ear, there's another one on the other side of you saying, I will take care of you because that's what I do. I take care of my own. I watch over on my own. I protect my own. And when they go through the valley called shadow of death, don't forget what David said. They ultimately are going to get through the valley called the shadow of death. Why? because I have a way of picking them up with my strong hand and taking them down through the valley of the shadow of death. The psalmist said it this way, weeping may endure for a night, but I stop by to tell you, hey, I stop by to tell you, hey, I stop by to weeping may endure for a night. All I've got to do sometimes is get through the night by way of the hand of God. But there's something that's coming in the morning. Has anybody ever experienced it? It's called happiness. No, happiness is based upon situation. But joy comes in the morning. This joy I have doesn't come because of my situation, but it becomes because this joy I have. The world didn't give it to me, and the world can't take it away. Now, let me just close. The devil is walking around, rowing at you. The mighty hand of God is in front of you. So, so what, what, what Peter says, take a load off as we stand together. He says, cast all your cares before him, upon him rather, for he cares for you. Care. In the original language, it means worries, anxiety, heavy burden. Now, I know what, what some of you are saying. You're saying, well, Reverend, I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing all right. I, I really don't have any of all that. But I wanted you to notice that, that Peter didn't say, if you have any cares, cast them. He didn't say, do anyone have any worries? He doesn't say that. Is there anybody in the house that is carrying a heavy burden? He doesn't say that. He makes an assumption. He says, cast your cares, which means that everybody has some worries and problems. When you come into the world, you come into the world as infants worry. That's why babies cry. That's why babies whine. Give me something to eat. Clean me up. I'm afraid you're gonna allow this stuff to sit inside of me for longer than I really want to have it inside of my diaper. Four years old are worried as kids. When I was four years old, I think it was about four years old, I was afraid of the dark because I just knew either a ghost was going to come in there and scare me to death or either my brother was going to come in there and mess with me. 13-year-olds have cares and worries. They're, they're trying to fit in and they're, they're doing in everything in order to fit in. And some of them would even get involved in wrong behavior, whether it's drugs or whether it's sexism or whether it's gangism or whatever they'll get in trouble they have worries will I fit in or will I not fit in in my seventh or eighth grade class and then 18 year olds after they have graduated they are worried that they're going to get a job and worried whether or not it's going to be a kind of dead-end job and 
Will they find the right kind of spouse to marry and ultimately have a great family? And will they be able to afford housing and health care and all of those other kinds of things? The business person has a problem. They got to do a presentation and they want to work. They're worried as whether or not the presentation is going to take them to the next level. Middle-aged folks have worries whether or not they're going to retain the lifestyle that they have accomplished for themselves. And then people who are senior citizens have worries. They're worried about whether or not their social security is going to remain or going to kick in at a certain kind of a time and whether or not they will be able to benefit from their health care or if they're going to have good health or bad health. Or aging is going to be a problem for them. Peter says, cast your care. I, he says, everybody has, cast, has cares. He says, all of us are like that, that air flight, that flight, air flight Florida that, that pitched into the Potomac River. Air Florida was, Air Florida 90 was leaving out of Washington Airport and got over the Potomac River, headed back down to Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and all of a sudden it crashed into the Potomac River. Some of you remember it. And, and what happened was is that the captain refused to de-ice in the winter time. Y'all li listen to that word, de-ice. They needed to de-ice the plane. And what happened was the first layer of freeze began to freeze on the wing of the plane. And the captain refused to hang in there a little while longer to be de-iced. He had already been on the runway for an hour, so he decided to just go on and fly off, not being de-iced. And suddenly the plane goes down in the Potomac River because the plane cannot handle the heavy ice on the wing. Some of us need to de-ice de-ice our lives and cast our cares upon him. Cares, trials and tribulations and worry. The Bible says be anxious for nothing but in all things in prayer and supplication make them known unto God. Cares. He says, he says everybody got a problem and if you don't think you got a problem you really have a problem. I know that's right. You're walking around here thinking you're all balanced and thinking you're all straight and you're thinking this way and that way and at the end of the day, Peter says, you all got cares, anxiety, and worries. But it gives to those Jews during his time, those Christian Jews, if you will, he gives to them a solution, even to the Gentile. He says, here what you do. I want you to take your cares, write them down, and cast them. Throw them away. Throw them away. Did we turn that mic down? Turn that mic up. Throw them away. Cast your cares. Cast your cares. Get rid of your cares. Cast your cares. Cast your care. And the word cast, the word cast is the same word that the gospel writers use. When Jesus is going into Jerusalem, when he is walking into Jerusalem and all of a sudden he tells them, go find a donkey that I might, young donkey that I might set upon them. The Bible says they cast their garments on the donkey. And then they put Jesus on top of the donkey. And Jesus sat on the donkey and held the garments down. I, I need to tell you that Jesus will set upon your problem, that Jesus will set upon your situation, that Jesus can handle your worry, that Jesus can deal with your problem, that Jesus can put your problem to a stop, that Jesus can handle the pandemic, that Jesus can handle the virus, that Jesus can handle your finances that are fractured, that Jesus can handle your messed up friends, that Jesus can handle whatever is mishandling you. Turn it over to Jesus. And I tell you today that Jesus will work it out. He'll make a way out of nowhere. He'll be a friend 
in an unfriendly world. The cattle upon a thousand hills belong to him and everything else belong to the Lord. Cast your cares upon who? Don't cast them upon yourself. Don't try to handle late at night your own care, but cast your cares upon him. For he careth for you. Cast your cares upon him, for he cares. Write me down. For he cares for you. Cast. Cast. Stop carrying them. What are you worried about? Cast. Throw them on to Jesus and let him work it out. And you bow your heads in a word of thanks unto God. Even now, even now. Oh, eternal God, our Father, please forgive us for putting and handling everything that you put before us into our own hands. Our hands are weak, God. And we're humbling ourselves enough to admit that we have messed up and trying to deal with things that you have placed before us. Our marriages, our children, our friends, and even this pandemic, you told us to walk by faith and not by sight. But we are reminded that you have mighty hand and that you can handle all of our fractured lives. Even in this nation, God, you have proven yourself to be true. True in the sense that you have transitioned things and are transitioning things back to a level of, of normality. We ask you to forgive us of our sins, even now. God, we, we want to now take all of our burdens and we want to leave them with you I'm praying right now God that you will give to these your people wisdom remind us that you said cast all of our cares unto him being God who expresses himself in the form of father in the form of son in the form of Holy Spirit God remind us that we're not fatherless but we have a father who sits high and looks low and guides our feet wherever we go. We have a father and we can call on daddy any time, any moment, in any situation, in any emergency. Our daddy will handle our problems. Not only will our daddy handle our problems, but you said to us that we have the son who is our elder brother who is constantly mediating between us and you at all times, sitting at the right hand of the father who goes to the grave and dies on Calvary and rises from the grave. We thank you, God, for your son, Jesus Christ, who died for our sins. If we can lean and depend upon him to walk with us and talk with us by way of the Holy Spirit that is here with us right now, you said to us we were to love you with all of our heart, all of our mind, all of our spirit, and all of our strength. And the only way we can do that, God, is to ask the Holy Spirit to infiltrate our spirit and to infiltrate our body and to cleanse our body from all diseases, hurt, harms, and dangers, and to strengthen us in our spirit and to remind us that you look not on the outer appearance, but rather you look at our heart. So we're asking you to do a kind of heart transplant on our heart. Exchange our heart for your heart. In the name of Jesus, we are declaring that right now, God. Thank you, God, for people who have come to church. Thank you, God, for people who are sitting in their cars, reflecting upon their lives and saying, yes, maybe that's what I need to do. I need to cast all of my cares upon him, for he careth for me in the name of Jesus if you're here today you never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior you need to do it right now all you have to do is make that confession and believe it in your heart if you just say God come into my heart my spirit and my soul and my mind I believe that you died on the cross for my sin was 
buried, resurrected from the grave. And I know right now I can walk by faith in that believing that you are my Lord and my Savior. Once you do that, you are saved. And then God begins to work in you and you become sanctified. And you become, you start to move into a, not a higher level in Christ. And if you're here, you've done that. I want you to look on the screen. There is a listing of ways that you can unite with us. You can call us at 440-232-2645. You can email us at Mount Zion, uh, mzov.org. And those of you who are across the country looking at us, we've had folk looking at us as far as South Africa, Europe, France, Germany, South America, and even Canada. Those in the west coast of California, we've noticed that we've had folk all around the entire globe. We want you to know that you can become what we call an e-member of our church. That means you are an electronic member of our church. All you have to do is email us or or call us and just say, hey, I want to unite with you. I've accepted Christ. You may say, I, I, I want to be a part of his kingdom. And you can become an e-member of the Mount Zion Church. And then you can connect with us and all of the services that we also avail ourselves to all of our members. So I hope that you will consider being an e-member. You're not a member of a church. You're not going anywhere. And for right now, you need covering. You can't get to Mount Zion Church. Or maybe you live around the corner and you're stuck in the house or whatever you can become an e-member of the mount zion church even now as we bow our heads and we're going to partake of the lord's supper those of you who are in the car i hope you have your your receptacles we're going to ask all of you to just come up front after we pray go back to your area and we'll eat we'll uh, take up the uh, lord's supper together eternal god our father we thank you for this marvelous fruit of the vine that represents your blood and this bread that represents your body that was sacrificed on Calvary for us and we do this in the remembrance of that great sacrifice that nobody else could have done other than our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ we're going to invite you all to come up right now and you can pick up a, a, a receptacle and we will leave out together again we thank those of you No, you can't turn that off and turn the whole system back on. I just want to check. I think the system's off a little bit today. I'll do it at the end just to be for sure. Just take a second. Open your receptacle as far as you can for right now. Then we'll partake of it as soon as you receive it. Nobody like you. channel you can go there up under Mount Zion Church MZOV and you can find one of our YouTube's that describes what this means and how to participate with your family Thanks unto God in your own way.
confess your sins unto God. He's faithful to forgive you and to cleanse you of all unrighteousness. There's now no condemnation to those who are in the Lord. And on the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread and he blessed it. He gave it to them and said, as often as you do this, as often as you participate in this, whether it's weekly, monthly, or even daily, I need you to remember the sacrificial act that I did on Calvary to save you and to restore the relationship that was lost in the Garden of Eden between you and me. As often as you do this, as you take the bread symbolizing my precious flesh that was pierced, that was wounded, that was beaten, that was battered, was filled with stripes from the Roman garrison. He said, at Austin, as you do this, do it in the remembrance of that until I come again. Let us eat together. And then the Bible says he took the fruit of the vine. He blessed it. He said, this represents sinless blood. Though I came to you in flesh, I never committed one sin, but rather I was totally obedient to the will of the Father, and we were one on everything. But I came in flesh, for flesh. And I gave my sinless blood to counteract your sinful blood that came through you by way of the line of Adam and Eve in the garden. But this will cleanse you as often as you do this and drink of it. Do it in the remembrance of me. Let us drink together. The Bible says that they went out and they fellowship with each other. Why don't you just turn to your neighbor and just wave at them. Those of you in the car, wave at the person in the car next to you. Amen. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you. We bless you now, God. We ask that you will be with us as we go throughout this week. God, I pray that you will be with everyone in the house, outside of the house, in the community. Help us to think right so we can walk right. Thank you, God, for this marvelous choir that have shared with us today, musicians, staff persons, and members and friends. Be with us as we are forever with you. In Jesus' name we pray. And all the people of God shouted, amen. Turn to your neighbor and wave at him and consider yourself dismissed. Amen. Could you Amen. Y'all have a great day. We're going to give y'all a break today. Y'all worked so hard today.